Hi all, I'd like to introduce my second attempt at making a game with Python. I'll talk you through the challenges faced and my journey creating this somewhat nearly finished demo. So, in lieu of a suitable name yet, sit back, relax, and watch me play through this and talk through this Cyberpunk Metroidvania. Yeah, we'll go with that. I started my game dev journey around September last year, having previously never coded before. It took me a couple of months to come out with a simple platformer, where the main character was my chocolate Labrador, which you can check out in my other videos, and shown on screen now. So, having got the bug, and many others along the way, I started to dream up huge games I could never make as a kid. Um, but maybe now I could, and quickly found out what is meant by scope creep. So not satisfied with Pong, Breakout or Space Invaders, and games like that, I start to try and bang together my own scalable Metroidvania. I mean, who doesn't like running around and finding stuff in a Metroidvania? So here it is, after a number of failed attempts, I mean, check out all these dead games. I finally got some traction on fleshing out a version which was working when I tried to add new things. I finally got the hang of object oriented programming and suddenly game dev felt somewhat unlocked. I was like, wow, pass this in here, call it over here, iterate through this, hey, this is similar to this, let's inherit from that class, let's get a globally accessible dictionary for everything. And that was it. I was plugged in even in evening after evening working on this game. And a month later, we have this, a playable Metroidvania. Nothing too original, and the graphics still need a bit of polish. But it's a playable demo, and spoiler alert, there is no boss yet, I'm afraid. But hey, you can collect stuff, use swords, different guns, different enemies, and with a bit of AI, and there's a map, and some other stuff. So before I go into the dev bit, just like to say none of this would have been possible um, without the tutorials from YouTube from Coding with Russ, Clear Code, CD Codes and others on YouTube who've helped me get started and understand object oriented programming. I'll chat about various features, how I coded them and what's next for this game. Um, a name would be good for a start so please before we continue click subscribe if not at least to guilt trip me into making more Pygame game content and also motivate me for when I'm feeling lazy. Okay, let's go on to the dev bit and let's start from the beginning. The basic structure of the game then has been to create a main game class which has all the menu states plus a game running boolean. The game running st starts the level class and everything within particular room or level is then coded in here uh, with things spawning based on CSV files created by Tiled Software which is great for making levels and I highly recommend this software. It's totally free downloadable online. All artwork was done using the Piscal editor um, which is great for making pixel art quickly and it's really intuitive and easy to use and I've done all the artwork with this. Um, this runs in your browser and you can just download what you make and you can upload um, things as well and you can split them into sprite sheets, single images and you can see your animations running etc. Um, it's all really good stuff, quick demo showing on screen now. So regarding the game there are of course other classes such as player and enemies which are all called in the level class and it all got a bit sloppy from there really. Um, for example, the player and enemy bullet collisions were whacked in the bullet class itself. The player collisions are in the level class, the enemy collisions are in the enemy class, and towards the end I threw in the towel, and when I couldn't get the death animation to end on the last frame and kill the sprite, I just created a particle effect for each sprite upon death, which seems to run fine. In truth, this is easy to fix. It's just that I had coded animations already from a character class, which enemies and the player inherit from and I would have had to go back and change all this which I just can't be asked to do frankly. Something to tidy up in future though. So 
Um, the game mechanics. Well, the first thing was to create the mechanics for the player really and the animations and make sure this feels and looks right. After failing to make an abstract state class, despite online tutorials showing you how, I guess my comprehension just has its limits for now at least, I kind of got a state machine of sorts to work. So based on the player's velocity and um, some booleans of what the player is doing at a particular time, I created a player state function which determines what animation will be played depending on the given state of the player. It seems to work well with no bugs. I mean, by all means, look very closely, I couldn't find or see any. So levels and rooms, or rooms, whichever you want to call them. After finally coding a flexible camera class which can follow an entity by way of creating a sprite class, of which all that is drawn to the screen is relative to whatever you pass in as a parameter, in this case the player, and adding a function which reads the room width and height from the CSV file, which is then used to constrain the camera within the room, well, the world was now my oyster. Or so I thought, until the next roadblock. Going back and forth between rooms. So this took me ages. I first made a map in its entirety and divided into smaller screen size rectangles. I created a collision mechanic with each rectangle which centered the camera view on this rectangle. It worked perfectly for single screen Zelda like transitions, but I wanted more variation in my level or room shape and size. So I instead created a dictionary of numbered exits for each level. Upon collision with these exit sprites, it would call a new level instance with a corresponding entry position. This corresponding entry position had the next level for this particular exit as a key value pair. So the new level instance would create the correct level and place the player at the correct position. Worked lovely. So the map. The next problem. Every self-respecting Metroidvania game needs a minimap. How the hell can I neatly create a minimap when every level is independent and has no relative Cartesian coordinates to each other? Messy hard coding of rectangles. That's how. Again, another dictionary of rects for each level and place marker which centers it based on the current level passed into the map class. And as tedious as it was to code, it worked. Another cool thing is until you collect the tracker, only the current room you're in will be displayed. A list is populated with every new level you enter and only if you have this tracker will the map show all the visited rooms. So this was all well and good until I adjusted the screen size and scale of the game from 540p 540p up to 720p and forgot to place all the rectangles relative to the bounding menu box uh, so it's saying at 540p for now and we're the 16 by 6 to 16 tile size and three times the on the scale if you're wondering okay next up the game design problem so I wanted to throw together a small number of rooms to showcase the features I made and the artwork I've done. So I got to work on drawing out a map. This shouldn't take too long I thought, but boy how wrong I was. After about 20 iterations and designs, I came up with the simplest map ever that felt like it had a feeling of exploration and progression without being too simple or too complicated. I was probably trying to add too much into a small world, which in hindsight was probably the reason things I planned just didn't work. But there are numerous ways of bypassing abilities, getting them earlier and getting to areas sooner than the invisible hand critical path shown in this playthrough. So I'm kind of happy with this, but it gave me a massive respect for level designers and how this is a whole topic in itself and can take much longer than coding if you want something to feel right and engaging. So as I expanded the game, the game grew and more sprites were added. I noticed I needed to start layering certain sprites. The player would go behind the neon exit signs, the interactive terminals and NPCs would be in front of the player and similar strange stuff was happening. I thought this would be an easy fix. Um, Pygame has some layered updates thing in the sprite class I read about which will just do this easily until it didn't as all my screen sprites are in a group which is drawn to the screen in the camera class and groups are in no particular order in Python. After a lot of head scratching the solution turned out quite simple. Just put the sprites into new groups and draw the groups individually, one after the other. So I made a background group, a foreground group, and then drawn whatever was left after that was not in the background or foreground group, and bang, done. Remember, sprites can be in multiple groups at once, which is such a useful tool. So how did I code some of the other stuff? 
um, the secret areas just iterate through the blocks that vanish and kill the sprite instantiating the particle effect elevators create collisions which determine the player's position on the elevator when collided and if press a button and collided move both the elevator and player the player then hits the exit collision on the way out and respawns on the elevator in the new level guns in the level class a boolean for guns out if guns out create instance of gun if not kill sprite cycle through guns well iterate through yet again another dictionary of the guns you currently have collected when you collide with these pickups it simply adds the details into the dictionary the bullets again are in another dictionary with all their respective variables and values such as bullet speed cooldown image damage etc and when shooting the bullet instance is created depending on the current gun that is armed which is passed into the bullet as a parameter neat or it felt it anyway when your guns are put away and you press shoot, the player will swipe the sword with two different random animations, but the same hitbox, so the combat is predictable but in a good way. The player can swipe once in the air and move freely, so it adds a bit of variation and strategy for the player to learn. I made the player a little faster with the guns away so as to balance the melee and shooting abilities, along with a pause if the player is grounded whilst melee attacking. The problem I need to fix is though that an enemy in the level starts to fire their gun when you swipe the sword. So this button is triggering enemy bullets somehow when your guns are put away. I thought I was clever by coding the bullet class so an instance can be called from the enemy or player but I think I'll have to separate the enemy and player bullets to fix this issue. But I've not had a look into this yet. Anyway it's kind of cool when an out of sight enemy starts shooting it kind of gives the player a oh crap moment what's happening. Or maybe I'm reaching here. Mm, yeah I think I'll just get that fixed. pause moments so these little pause moments in the game where you collect stuff is kind of neat whereby it calls a pause class which then holds the player for a certain time depending on what they collided with and the pause class has parameters such as what to display on screen transition type and other stuff ideally I would like to add these as independent game states in future as it got a little messy after a bit as I had to start adding a lot of if else statements just to make sure the player could not do anything during these little pauses which led to some annoying results. So with a separate state it would render all inputs useless until the state switches back. Much cleaner. This leads us on to key presses. Thanks CD codes for showing me that you can just whack all your key events in a dictionary and call them anywhere. The only continuous key presses is for firing the guns where it runs a cooldown between bullets otherwise the rest are key down and key up events which once I did this made the mechanics feel far slicker when it came to jumping etc. Prior to this I was using key presses so holding jump would just make the player bounce around all the time. Interesting in shallow passageways. I did abuse this freedom however unintentionally as some mechanics I put in the main game loop under the key event, some I put in the player class and I even put key events in the elevator class for going up or down. A much neater solution would be to just have a single get input method in the player class while the game is running and in each of the other states. So one thing I'm quite proud of is the save feature. I'm very happy with this feature. Firstly, why is it some sort of creepy cryo chamber? Well, the idea was that you meet an NPC who tells you to leave your biometric data here and if you die it will automatically clone you, which kind of explains how you can just reincarnate. A bit weird but I'm sure this idea could fit into a wider story in a neat way. It may have been done before, but I can't say I play many games. I just like to make them. Truth be told, I've never actually played Metroid or Castlevania. A little bug where the player also jumps as you press up when you save, but that's easy to fix. I just forgot. Uh, I'm not lazy, honest. So playtesting was a real pain in the here, as I had to make sure everything worked once all items were collected after traversing a few levels. So there is a data dictionary that holds all the current player's details such as items held, current level and other bits and then a save data dictionary which is initially empty. When the player hits a checkpoint the save data dictionary simply updates with the current data dictionary so when the load level function is called the player resets with all the abilities and all the stuff they had and spawns at the checkpoint. This same data is written out to a text file via JSON 
when you exit the application and is written back in upon open so you will always start at your last checkpoint. In the main menu there is the option to reset all data which starts you back at the beginning with nothing. So anything else? We've looped through the game now, we've gone back to the start so you should have seen everything in the game and the critical path. Um, the title screen is not there, one reason could be because I'm lazy again. Um, it's simply add another title state and if any key pressed, switch to the main menu. But I'm going to go with the excuse that I've had no name for the game yet, so a title screen is kind of pointless. Again, I'm not lazy, honest. So future plans is maybe to flesh this game out a bit more. Extend the different areas as the current setup does not make sense, but it does showcase what I've done so far. And add a few more features such as lasers, grenades, and a very Axiom Verge style idea of a drone to get through small areas instead of a crouch or a morph ball. I've had a little play with the camera class and you can create a variable target as a parameter. So this could be switchable between the player and other objects. Watch this space, I suppose. For assets, we'll quickly mention those. I've drawn all the artwork with an online app called Piscal, which has been pretty intuitive to use. I'm still a beginner to pixel art and art in general, so forgive some of the inconsistencies, but it's nice to have a break occasionally from coding to create some weird stuff and let the creativity flow. Many more NPCs are planned and something to replace the generic gradient fill backgrounds. Ideas for NPCs are welcome, our creativity has limits as can definitely be seen. I will look into parallax backgrounds a bit more, but I can't think at the moment how I will implement this yet. Sound effects are quite easy with Pygame's built-in mixer, just spent an evening trawling the web for free music and sound effects. So um, a big thanks to Carl Casey from White Bat Audio for the music, links to their work can be found in the description. Conclusion? Okay. That is all I can think of for now, so any questions, let me know in the comments and please let me know any features I could add next. Or better still, any ideas for a boss fight would be great. Oh, and the name for the game would be good. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.